Today we're going to talk about what kind of palette you should use. This video is for people who are new to painting and you're not quite sure what kind of palette to get. Uh, this is a traditional palette and uh, it's used by putting your hand right through there like that and then uh, you take a paintbrush. I need a paintbrush. <laughs> Let me... Okay, so I, I have a paintbrush and uh, then you're painting along like this and you're painting and it makes you look really cool, okay? But uh, they are hard to use and I'm gonna suggest some other things because um, a traditional palette, you have to condition the wood. Usually they come raw. And do I have any raw ones around here? No, I don't. Okay, the wood usually comes unfinished and so then you'll have to stain it a good mid value. Then you'll have to put a varnish coat on it or some um, uh, plastic coat or something on it to protect it. Uh, because every time you use your palette and you're done with it, you got to clean it off. So you got to rub it down with a lot of thinner and stuff. Uh, I do have artist friends who don't clean it. They let the paint build up and it gets really artsy looking and it's really fun and people like to see palettes all messed up like that. But the problem with that is we get little flicks of paint, dry paint, in our paintings. We call them paint boogers. And uh, that's a big problem with those people who like to look artsy. So this is a very practical approach to palettes. If you're beginning, I highly recommend you not get one of these. But when you do get one of these, get a really big one because <laughs> then it makes you look very impressive to have something like that and then I can have like a gazillion colors here. Uh, this one I've used a few times and I got to be honest I'm not a big fan of this type of palette either and so uh, I, I hate to clean up. Uh, I like keeping it simple and practical and so I'm going to show you some simple and practical palettes to use. Okay, here is a simple practical palette that a lot of professional artists like to use, and it is glass. So I have a cut piece of glass on the front side, and then on the back side I have a piece of masonite. And then I sprayed the back of this glass with a middle gray color, and I think I used automotive primer for it. And then I taped the sides just to keep uh, the two pieces of wood and glass together and and the glass is also a little sharp so I made sure I had a lot of thick tape there so I'm not going to hurt myself. Artists like this in general because it's easy to clean up so uh, once we squeeze out our paints on top and we're done with painting for the day uh, I can take a paper towel and wipe it down then I can take a little thinner and wipe down and if I have any dry paint on there at all, then I take a razor and then I just scrape it all up and wipe it and I have a nice clean palette. And I'm going to talk to you about the advantage of having a mid-value or a mid-value gray color on the palette. If we are mixing colors and we're trying to be accurate on the values that we're going to be putting on our canvas, if I start off with a white palette, like some disposable palettes are, then anything I squeeze on there, I'm comparing it to white. And so all my colors are looking dark, darker than what they will look like in the end. And so then as I'm mixing, I'll probably start adding more white to it to lighten it up. And then when I think it looks good compared to my white palette and I get into my painting, then I start to realize my colors are too light. So having a mid-value gray or the wooden palettes, which are kind of a mid-value brown color, they really help you uh, gauge accurately the value. And so that's one reason why a lot of professional artists like having some sort of mid-value or mid-value gray color uh, on the palette. Uh, there are some disposable palettes that you can buy, uh, and you probably already are familiar with the disposable white ones. Uh, those are old butcher paper uh, that someone about 50 years ago thought, hey, th this would make a great palette, and it, and it did. It was disposable, but it was white. So many years ago, someone came out with a palette called Gray Matters, and it's a middle value gray. 
uh, it works great for oils and acrylics. And I have some students who really enjoy using it because it's uh, disposable. When you're done, you can rip it off, roll it up, throw it away, and you have a nice clean palette. Cleaning time is almost zero. Now I'm going to show you uh, how to put a palette together the way I like to do it. And that is with tracing paper and a piece of masonite. And here is an example of masonite. It's some dark masonite. And then I painted it black. Then I put down some tracing paper, just cheap tracing paper. When you look through the tracing paper, it gives me a good middle gray value, which is very handy. And the nice thing about this, rather than the disposable ones, is it's not glary. The surface is very matte and it works very well. Because it's tracing paper, it has a high dense uh, medium in there that holds the paper particles together and oils don't soak through, which is really nice. So this palette would be great for oils, but not for acrylics. So oil paints behave very well on this. And I discovered this out of a moment of desperation uh, as an illustrator and I needed something quick. And I just grabbed some tracing paper thinking it's pretty dense, it might work, and it works. So I'm going to show you how I put one of these palettes together. Okay, get some tracing paper. And this is not real high quality tracing paper, it's cheap. And I usually get a size of tracing paper that I like and then I cut my masonite uh, just an inch wider on both sides. This is a 12 by 20 inch, okay? And so I'm using 12 by 18 inch tracing paper. And I just take some painter's tape and I'm able to tape down both sides. Okay, this is a little tip. I see my beginning students do this. Uh, they don't want to use much tape because they're being thrifty. And they'll put down a little bit of tape like this just on both sides. But when you get into the mixing with your knife and stuff, uh, the paper starts to pull like this and it gets out of control. So if you want to save money, then make sure the corners are taped down. That way you don't use as much tape. And that way when you're mixing, you don't have the pulling of the paper. And now I have a pretty good mid-value gray or pretty close to it. I have a non-shiny surface from my perspective. I don't have that really slick surface. And uh, it feels really good when you're actually mixing the paint on it. It doesn't slide around so much. And so this is what I like to do for a palette. And it's pretty cheap. It's just as cheap as palette paper, maybe cheaper. As it's, it's as cheap as your tracing paper that you buy. And the board you reuse over and over again. This board I probably have had for 15 years. And I have several of these around the studio and I can get several palettes going at the same time. Now I'm going to talk to you about a little tip. Okay, what do you do? Sometimes you, you put out way too many colors and you wish you could put some of those colors back in the tube or maybe a color was really hard to mix and you don't want to have to remix it the next day or the next week. Well, you can take your colors and you can freeze them. So uh, this is a piece of plastic that I have right here. And I just tape a piece of tracing paper to the plastic. And then I can scoop up my colors from my palette and put them right there. So these are colors I don't want to have to remix next week. Then I can just put this into the freezer. And I can come back the next day, the next week, or even the next month and pull them out let them warm up for about a half hour and then you're ready to paint with them again. Keeps them very fresh and you can keep paints going for a couple months this way. A lot of my students do that when uh, they're working on a big project. They'll take their project home from the class. They'll put them in the freezer right away and then they pull them out when class comes next and by the time they get into the room their paints are ready to go. There is also a, um, a box that uh, is on sale for artists and it is like a Tupperware box. It's 12 by 16 inches. You can see one has a blue lid and then one has a red lid. They're made by the same company and it fits a perfect 12 by 16 inch disposable palette in there. So if you want to get a disposable palette like the, the gray matters, they have a 12 by 16 format 
and you can work off that and then instead of scraping your paints off you just drop the tissue right in there put the cap on throw it in your freezer and you're good to go that way you can stick your frozen foods on top of it and you don't have to worry with this at the studio uh, I have a little college refrigerator with a little freezer that I use here and so I never keep frozen foods in there so I just throw this in there and it's not a problem okay so I hope this video on pallets help if you're still not sure go with something simple go with either the disposable gray matters or get a piece of masonite and some tracing paper keep it simple that's it